I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. And I move in front of these people. And it was like this middle-aged couple, right? And I thought, good for them. Sure. <laughs> you know, good for them that they're seeing this movie. And uh, I'm just like, oh, whatever. And they're really close to where I'm sitting, but that's whatever. So Bambi the Reckoning trailer plays. And, <laughs> you know, I hear some grumblings from them, right? Then the movie starts and they're talking to each other so i'm like oh, my god and so i kind of listen in to what they're saying and she goes i did not like that trailer and i'm thinking you expect what you were... <laughs> yeah and i'm like what are you talking about you know this is like this is like what and then all of a sudden the guy goes oh we're in the wrong movie <laughs> <laughs> and gets up That's and great. they both leave. Hey everyone. Hey everybody. Welcome to Why You Still Here, the show that we talk about whatever we want. I sound like Jeff Goldblum, the show where we talk about wh whatever we want, you know, <laughs> whatever. Uh, I've never been able to do a good one. But today we are yes. talking about <laughs> Blood and Honey Pooh, Part Blood two. And honey 2 review. This all rhymes. Oh, it all rhymes. Um, yeah. Yeah. I had to take that opportunity. And so we're going to do, we're going to start it off with just the the spoiler free in this video I'm gonna start off light we're we assume that not everybody caught it in the three you know nights that it was in theaters it was only in theaters three Today's nights the it was night. a fathom Today's event Thursday. and um yes and uh so there probably is some people that that didn't see it so you know you can watch this and see if you want to watch it when it goes out on streaming right which i don't think they've announced when that's going to be yet so this movie, it is directed by Reese Frake Waterfield, the same director as the first one. And it was written by Reese Frake Waterfield, as well as Matt Leslie, who was the writer of Summer of 84. And that was a popular film. So that was very good that they got him on their team because he actually did not like the first movie at all. And what he set out to do was write what he wanted to see on screen. And yeah, so, so I it's, think no, that... it's no surprise either that they've retconned the first movie all but. Right, right. Which we'll talk about that. Don't want to say any more than that, though. And I know. Spoiler. And then, of course, the movie stars Scott Chambers. Great job. My hat goes off to you, sir. Tallulah Evans and then. Uh, after that, it just goes into Ryan Oliva, who played Winnie the Pooh and Louis Santer, Tigger, you know, so on and so forth. But uh, not to belittle their not to belittle their parts or anything, but, uh, you know, whatever. Let's talk about Marcus Massey, though. He was Owl. I'll say. Yeah. yeah, he was the best character of the movie as far as the creatures or creatures is what I'm going to call them. Yeah, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And I, I didn't. I didn't expect him to be, but he, the char the character just worked for me. I love, I love the, uh, the design of the prosthetics. It looks owl like mm -hmm. enough. Um, the, the, the costume is, it's just goofy enough to work, but also be like effective there. There's one part he like, he, he's, you know, doing the, like the CG flying scene and then swoops and does a little thing. And it just looks so stupid. I loved it. And he also that was at the had, very that was the beginning of the movie. And he also had like um just not wise cracks per se, but like wise sayings here and there, and it just fit with the owl character. Ashdown views our existence as a plague, as horrors of the hundred acre wood, an evil which they created. Big surprise, really like that character. More so than uh, Tigger, than what I thought, and Pooh. Yeah, we can say it in a non spoiler. And Tigger, that's why I'm wearing this. You know, he's obviously a homage to the character. Um, Very much there's so also... in one particular scene. Better watch where you go, bitch. Damn. Like, 
like 10 minutes straight of a scene. There was also yes. Eddie McKenzie as Piglet, and there was Simon Callow as Cavendish, which I didn't know his name, but he was the uh, the gentleman that you see in the trailer in front of the uh, fireplace, right? Okay. This David come. So let's not keep everybody on the edge of their seats, Lucas. Yes. What did you think about this movie? So it's absolutely no surprise that the first movie, uh, just like quite a few people I was not a fan of. So I when when Brandon told me that he was like relatively excited for this yeah. movie and it, it's on it's on camera. We've talked about it. I was like, I didn't really say it, but I'm thinking the, dude, the dude. real version is not on camera. It is, okay. but it was <laughs> never released. So I'm thinking to myself. I mean, I have always known Brandon is unhinged, but like, what? Because this Brandon was going deep into it. And I'm like, dude, it's Winnie the Pooh. I really mm-hmm. don't care that much. I really didn't like the first movie at all. In fact, it's my number two of my, you know, 10 worst movies of 2023. Sorry, everybody. Um, I think that was the best way to go see this movie. Because again, the sequel, while it's not perfect, it's like an actual movie. Mm -hmm. And it's like an actual movie that has good things going for it. And I was relatively captivated for most of the movie. It is like a real movie. It's extremely well written. It's extremely well acted. The acting is was absolutely surprising. Anytime Scott Chambers had cried, I actually believed. Yes. Yes. Scott Chambers absolutely stole the show. And he is a very yeah. nice gentleman as well. We have uh, had the pleasure of talking to him a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, he's he's a very nice guy, very humble. And, you know, the acting, apart from him, I didn't see a weak link. Like, usually I'll see a weak link. You know, somebody that's not, you know, bringing all they can bring or maybe doesn't have the talent to do that. I didn't see it. Even from the kids, I did not see it. I mean, I was I was surprised that, that in other movies take the goofy old man trope to tell the story. Mm-hmm. Even then, good acting from all yeah, the side characters. Yeah, he wasn't even goofy. Too. He was just sad. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, the cinematography is I. I've only seen one other person mention this. So it's pretty damn gorgeous. I mean, so I was. It's, it's funny you say that because. That's also, I mean, not to cut you off, but yes, there there were two shots in particular that I thought about, but Mm -hmm. if I didn't say it, I'm going to forget that I had the two shots to mention. So there was one shot in particular. um, I can't get into like specifics about what happens, but there's like a father and son in the woods and they're bird spotting. And I literally, I took a moment to just take in the scenery because I was like, this is gorgeous because you just, you see the fog rolling through the scene. And I'm just like, what was their fog budget on this movie? Because that looks awesome, you know? Uh, Not cheap at all, like like Hollywood level we're talking here. And the other huge thing, like, I'll be honest with you, I did not notice the score in the first one at all, even though it's the same composer. I noticed the score in this movie and I loved it. Like yeah, I noticed it, was... it as being effective, not like stand out crazy good, but like a, just a, a very, a very good component, a good piece of the puzzle. I thought it was great. And it definitely helped amp up, you know, the moments that were supposed to be amped up that were supposed to be well, even Tense. even to, to go along with that statement, the sound mixing was also fantastic for being still what you would call an independent film. Because take um, shit, I'll just ask you the rave scene. I'm not going to mm-hmm. say anything about it, but I mean, there's so many movies where it's going to be completely blown out. The soundtrack is too loud. The people are talking loud to go over the music and it's not mixed properly. But it all kind of sounded like you were there, you know, seeing it in the theater. So all good on them that was one thing i noticed in particular with that audio but even down to the lighting the lighting was all great as well yeah nothing was too dark at night and everything that's lit was supposed to be lit really because i do have an issue with that and cody leach brought it up and 
he said that when he watched it, the night scenes were too dark to really see what was going on. And I had that issue as well. But then he had a friend that talked to him and said, I didn't have that issue. So I guess it's specific to the theater you have seen it in. Because the night scenes was something I was gonna I was gonna bring up as oh, a they, they they actually worked pretty good to me. And what and what I was gonna say about anything that was dark, um, there's an instance where two characters are talking by a fireplace. The lighting hits it all in just the right spots where you can tell that there's a light off screen, you know, that they're flickering, but only we would notice that because we know how movies are made, for example. But mm -hmm. just the way it all hit his face and then the corresponding character's face, it's like Jesus Christ, good job. So yeah, 100%. it doesn't come across as amateur in any sense of the word, I guess is what we're trying to say. No. And the camera movement, the direction, <sighs> fantastic. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, I noticed a couple of shots going up to Christopher Robin's house, you know, like a dolly shot or like a tracking shot, whatever. Um, it seemed like it was on a track moving towards the house or moving away from the house. And I thought that mm -hmm. was really cool um coming out of the woods kind of thing and uh yeah so that was interesting um i think that it's great that they were able to do so many practical effect kills in this movie they were very smart with the way that they they sort of you know not to get into spoilers but a large amount of people die at a certain part and they obviously don't have the budget of a big Hollywood movie. So, you know, they have to use tricks here and there. And I think that that worked very well. They integrate um, it very well. They do. And so I was trying to look at it from that perspective. And I don't, I, I feel sad saying this because maybe I'm wrong and maybe it's just personal taste, but I think some of the kills were a little mean spirited rather than funny or fun or whatever. Like the first one had things like the B scene where Boo could control Boo, Boo, <laughs> where who could control bees. Remember that? Yeah. That was like one of my favorite parts of that movie where he sends bees at somebody and they kill them you know that mm. kind of thing like that's fun right and it's fun it's funny you know a lot of times people said like they should have signature kills which they did in this movie they did have signature kills uh where like a finisher where Pooh takes like a honey pot and shoves it on somebody's head like that kind of thing you yeah. know like you kind of want to see that kind of stuff but some of these kills were like terrifier you know what I mean? Like pouring bleach into the wound kind of kills. Well, one of the and first kills of, of, of the movie. I, mean, it's I was pretty... confused uh, on exactly what was happening in those moments, but continue. We'll talk about it. Okay. Uh, yeah, that that just, it was one of the, because there's multiple kills at that part. Yes. But I'm, I'm sure the one in particular that was very torturous from Pooh. Yes. I'm just, yes. I'm like, I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. What the fuck is up with this guy? Yeah. And that was the beginning yeah. of the movie too. So I guess that set up like, the rest like of, the of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. But, and I was just, I was kind of confused by it. I, I was like, why? <laughs> you know, because it's such and a why change, them? but. Because with um, the hundred acre wood, I don't know. But anyway. Yeah. You know, this was uh, something that I thought would be a problem. The silhouette of Pooh and Tigger is almost identical. I hate to say it. If it weren't true. for the tail at times and looking for like the saber tooth design, there are moments where you don't know who the hell you're looking yep. at. Yep. I had moments where they were showing their face. You know, there was a close up of their close face up, and yep. I didn't know who I was looking at. We so, said that in the beginning, like yep. when the movie, when they released the pictures of it. So. I think no that the prosthetics there. should have more closely matched Pooh from the first one because Agreed. he just he had a very strong silhouette. You know, there's moments where you you get silhouettes of him in that first movie, you know, and just the way that he stands and looks like he's, you know, he's a big guy with his stomach protruding. Yeah, you it's know? got like the flat back with the big stomach and like yep. the, the way big the mask head, was. The cheeks. It, it looked like Disney without stepping on their toes too much to get sued. Yeah. So. And you knew exactly who you were looking at from that silhouette. And I didn't get that from this movie. I hate to say it. I think all the other characters' designs are fantastic. 
but poo is like a sticking point for me and i i it's like the hill i'll die he looks, on. He looks more like um like a really pissed off lion cub but simultaneously old at the same time yeah yeah it's very interesting yeah. um there is without you know getting too much into what's going on here there's characters unfortunately that fall out of the movie and they come to no real true resolution by the end of the movie so um they have more of a cop out if anything but whatever yeah it reminded me of leprechaun where the movie just ends <laughs> before it's actually supposed to kind of thing indeed it's yeah. funny i'm happy that i have that to use as an example and uh that's really all i have to say personally but one thing i do want to mention before we wrap this up is layoff tigger's tail i didn't think it was that big of a deal did you think it was that big of a deal so are you telling me that people hated the fact that it was cg yes charlie um yeah voice critical know. said it was like n64 graphics there are some scenes that look straight up in 64 era like Tigger's tail, for example. No! Wrong! No. Are you forgetting what the N64 looks like? No, it to me looks like early to mid 2000s, like CG integration. You know, if that, like it's maybe there was a it was a part where Tigger was standing over somebody on the ground, and, it was and then shot you from can, behind him, behind, and then yeah. you could see it, and that was. That was the first time I noticed, and pretty much the only time I noticed it was CG. So I actually, yes, nah. right. And they felt confident enough to put it right in the camera like that, which I guess maybe that's bad on them. But I think that it's time to let this go, guys. I'm gonna be completely it, honest. Why are you gonna sit deal? there and berate the movie? You know, the first one was a piece of shit. You know, this is yeah. not made to be Oscar worthy. Right. You're gonna nitpick the tail. Come on, bro. It's so stupid. It's like, it's like people, watching Sharknado and complaining about the CG of the shark. Are you what? what people you are using not Jaws. That, people are using this as an example of one of the reasons that this movie sucks for the people that don't like it. And it's like, no, I don't find that. To be I've a had enough point. of this, to be honest with you. But uh, as far as everything else, I think that, uh, you know, and I will say, I think some of the characters in the movie were wasted, unfortunately. And yeah, yeah. outside of that, though, it's it's strong, I think. And I mean, I, I got to commend them for taking every bit of the money that they made from the first one and putting it into the second, because that's really what it seems like. Absolutely. I, I'll, I'll give credit where credit is due, because you could have easily squandered that on yachts, hookers and below. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> good, good yeah. for them. Also for the director to come up with the idea of casting you know scott chambers in the lead role because he was just a producer on the last one scott chambers mm -hmm. was so you know they obviously knew of the talent they had on their hands and uh he was very 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 good there's some moments that feel like it's lifted out of a different movie because it gets so dramatic you know there's moments that feel it like does. five nights at freddy's and I won't say specifically what those moments are, but because I, I was like watching the exact it, same thing, and I'm like, what? What does this for? remind me of that I've seen recently? Oh, it hit, it hit me right off the rip. I Good. was like, and and the fact that it's a bear too, like just icing. Oh, of the course, cake. of course, <laughs> and that there's like four main villains and whatnot. So, whatever. Um, yes. What's your score for this bad yes. boy? I am right along the lines of imdb that we just checked i'm giving this bad boy six out of ten it's it's a bit above average yep. and uh i'm i'm more than happy with it actually i'm glad my expectations were so low i think that made it just you know all the bit better and i'm just because of how good i mean i loved owl and i'm excited to see what they're going to do with the, the next following characters mm. so yeah and they'll be bringing in um, other other people as well. You know, they're going to be bringing in Rabbit and Rue and Kinga. And yeah. You name it. So. Should be a fun time. Yeah. And it'll you can see more the... of a budget. Um, I'm more of a, I'm more afraid of one of those characters being a CG mess entirely versus like CG integrated with, you mm -hmm. know, like Owl was, for example, because they're obviously yeah. going to have more money again the third time around. 
Uh, and then after this, we have the entire Puniverse to look forward to. Just next year. It's crazy. Very crazy. But you can see that photo that they release of the Puniverse. And I didn't notice the center of this photo is Pooh riding Bambi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so... I don't know if that's something that's actually going to happen, but I, I sure hope Cause, so. Because because you were that's fucking hilarious. Because <laughs> you were looking for a man in a deer a deer mask <laughs> with a flannel yes. on and like hoof hands. Yes, <laughs> yes. You didn't see and him. I don't think that the uh, Bambi the Reckoning trailer has released to the public as of yet. But you know, for people that that don't know about this, look at that photo. Look at the deer on it. That's Bambi. That's really all you need to know. Um, and as far as it being a guy in a mask that I thought was going to be the case, I was wrong about that. And I'm happy to be wrong. So, yeah, um, I would give it. I would. You know what? I'm going to go a little bit higher. I'm going to do six point five. Cool. It has its issues. There's moments that could be uh improved upon some significantly but wow great job guys i mean this I mean, was a massive <laughs> step in the right direction You're this was like a leap like... it was a, t a tigger leap in the right direction <laughs> I mean, the first movie, sorry, is like like a two out of ten. And for this to like just jump way up. I mean, because let's get real here. You guys know for a fact we watch a lot of really shitty. We just watch eight Leprechaun movies. All right. Coming off the heels of so many shitty movies. Check out the see, video. To see again, like a Leprechaun Return situation, to see a competently made funny, fun horror film. This was a good breath of fresh air. Not perfect by any stretch, but hell yeah. I'm absolutely I I'm going into the third one with some expectations if that gives you any inkling as to how this movie is so so the third one is is not even announced I mean it's announced officially but that comes after Puniverse okay. just so you know I didn't know um, that so because I know at the beginning when they're talking at Scott Chambers and Reese Frank Waterfield did say something about special features and deleted scenes that'll be on the DVD obviously Blu-ray release as well as Blood and Honey Part Two, and then he mentioned that Part Three is a thing. So mm -hmm. I thought they were just doing it like while they're doing Puniverse, but because then he so, mentioned the Pinocchio thing. I mean, that's that's all. I'll tell you been announced, but so it's it's all been announced. The Twisted Childhood Universe is what it's called, <laughs> the TCU, and um, <laughs> after this we have Bambi the Reckoning. That's the next movie. Then oh we have Peter God. Pan's Neverland Nightmare. I'm I'm really excited by for Scott that Chambers. one. Pinocchio <laughs> Unstrung, which I'm, has I'm, promised well. a Pinocchio that is going to put on a human skin and try to be a human. They so I'm, I was kind of conflicted that they said that right at the beginning because if they were saving that for like a big wow moment in the movie, that's fucking gross. That's awesome. But they did also say in the same breath that they're working with the puppeteers that did the Chucky puppets. So oh, that's really good. I'm I excited. Like I'm really excited. That's the one I'm most excited for, just for that like tidbit alone. That's fantastic. And then it's all going to end in the... It's all going to cultivate. Culminate. Is that the word to use? Culmin it's going to culminate in the Puniverse. Monsters Assemble 2025. And so been asking then... for the Universal Monster Universe to make a return. I guess this is as good as I'm going to get for now. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, we're getting Wolfman, right? Like, that's been announced. We're getting Wolfman in that Universal universe. When and when is this one coming out? 2027. Maybe. Um, but at least we're getting it. This is everything that is announced is the Twisted Childhood universe. So I love the Blood Pinterest and Honey logo, three. by the way. It just looks so MCU. But anyway, it's, it's like the Avengers logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Avengers font. So Blood and Honey 3 is not in the slate. So. Yeah, I see. So it'll be the first one of phase two or whatever, <laughs> whatever they're they're headed towards here. Steamboat Willie will be the second one in phase that's two. Not Somehow them. they're working at that. Yeah, that's the different studio. That's not them. I was saying that as a joke. I forgot that paper mache Mickey was a thing. 
Lucky bastard. <laughs> oh, Christ. Yes, indeed. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk. Anyway. That brings us to the end. Uh, have you guys seen it out there? If so, what did you think about it? Were you surprised or were you disappointed? Surprise. Comment below. Let us know. If you haven't seen it yet, are you going to? Do you plan on, on seeing it? You probably can't see it in theaters. Um, but when it's on streaming, are you going to check it out? Comment below. Totally let us it. know. All your thoughts and feelings. Did we change your mind on anything? Are we like Steven Crowder? Let us know. Are we the Steven yeah, Crowder of uh, of uh, B oh. horror movies? Walk the dogs front and front. Walk the dogs front and Are you committed enough to do those things? Are you committed enough to do those things? Yeah, like I said, I'm one of the people that didn't care for the first movie. Yes, this and I was pretty decent. I was very much so like. You know, it was on my, my bottom of the year list, but I was kind of on the fence about it. I didn't think it was the worst thing ever, but this is, like I said, leaps and bounds better. But that's, that's it. That's true. Thanks for joining us, everybody. See you next time, okay? Bye, everybody.